A Nightmare on Elm Street, 2010. After an opening scene that is totally for reals, not at all a dream sequence, we get a teenager telling another teenager that he is being hunted in his dreams by someone who's really taking his sweet time showing up. Anyway, the film progresses as several other people realize that they've all been having the same dream. They're being hunted by a man in a red and green striped sweater, a fedora, and with a unique looking glove. I wanted to like this one. I really thought that it was going to turn out to be one of the better ones. Some of the dream sequences are really good. Most of them aren't, but a few of them are. The ending is great. The opening is also really good. I like Thomas Decker. And if he had a larger part in this, if they gave him more to do, it would have been good. I'd say he's the best actor of the kids in this. You know, other than him, we have more or less personality-less teens, and we have Quentin, played by someone who looks like a less pale and less shiny version of that dude from Twilight movies. I don't care enough about that franchise to even remember his name. Bring on the flames. The acting is okay. It's a big part of the problem is the script. The dialogue is repetitive. At times it really obviously delivers exposition instead of showing us what happened. I don't understand how this is such a difficult concept for so many current directors. And then there are the lines that are really obviously written for, you know, the trailers and such, you know. I'm not even going to be giving examples because, yeah, you basically know what I'm talking about. They have great sets, really creepy sets. I have no idea why they spend so little time showing us these sets. Who went around and told all the current horror directors that spending time building up atmosphere is a bad thing? The good horror directors knew this 20, 30 years ago. Okay, more like 30 years ago by now. I have to remind myself we're in the 2010s. Instead, they spend time building up the, not mystery, but sort of, well, the backstory. What exactly did happen? And they do change that just a little bit. But, without saying exactly what they're building up to and exactly what turns out to be the case, it's a huge anticlimax. Instead, they should have been spending time and energy building up these nightmares. Instead, they have a ton of really brief nightmares that don't go anywhere. Where Freddy doesn't do anything to anyone. Where they wake up screaming instead of being woken up by someone else. It raises the question, why do they keep sleeping other times, you know? Yes. Realistically, sometimes you do wake up, well, maybe not screaming, at least I've never experienced that, but sometimes you do wake up really abruptly from a nightmare, right before the really bad thing happens, or right after in that one Far Side cartoon. Or maybe it was Bizarro. Anyway, it takes away, because then why are they keeping, why do they continue sleeping, in the dreams where Freddy does do things to them, you know? It's not like they aren't scared in those. The... The new Kruger. I like Jackie or Haley. I think that's his name. A lot. He rocked 
as Rorschach. And he was pretty damn good in everything else I've seen him in, which is really only two other movies. One political drama kind of thing with Sean Penn in the lead, and Shutter Island, where he had a, a positively tiny role and still made an impact. His Kruger, it's not a bad performance. It's really not. It's badly written dialogue. Let me ask you, how many times have you had conversations in dreams with something that really scared you? People talking generally aren't scary, okay? If they don't say anything, then it's mysterious, and it's like... You know, think about it in another way. Who are you most attracted to, period? The people who constantly chat away, or the ones who don't say quite as much, or mysterious, you know. You want to know more. You don't want to hear a constant stream of talking, unless it's extremely interesting. The dialogue in this movie is not extremely interesting. It's really far from it, actually. They have conversations back and forth. Freddy talks too fucking much. Way too much. Yes, he... they... did away with the jokes. But, he still talks way too much. It's not as scary. One of the only situations where people talking is scary is if it's someone who could pass laws, and what they're saying is clearly absolutely insane. But enough about monotheists in charge. The dreams, a couple of them are effective, but mostly it just isn't. When they do spend too much time, they fill it with mindless chatter or exposition. You know, it's like they don't think that what they have is good enough. So they keep building to this other thing that wasn't in the other movies, and then when we get to the big reveal, it's a giant letdown, as I already mentioned. They should be spending this time, this effort, building up these dreams instead. There... There isn't a lot else to say about the movie, really. It's quite sparsely lit, but they still, they show way too much of Freddy way too early on, and then later they try to have him as, you know, just a silhouette. That is a great look. That should have been at the beginning of the movie. Instead, you see him, I mean, you don't see his full face, but you do still see him really early on. They also have this idea that if something works once, it'll work a hundred times. They keep having Freddy do variations of the exact same thing, instead of having him do one thing once and make that more effective, they have him do it five different ways, ten times, you know. As an example, yes, they do the thing of, you know, having him run the claws across something. They do this so many times. Way too many times. The makeup is altered. Personally, I think it looks a lot less grotesque. Maybe it looks more like a burn victim, but it just isn't. I hate to think that these people thought that what they're doing here is a representation of reality. It just isn't as unforgettable. One more thing about Jack Earl Hurl. Haley, whatever. I respect you, dude. I just don't remember your name right now. He puts a lot of energy into it, and when it really works, you are scared of him, and part of that is definitely his performance. A big problem is the writing. And... Yeah, basically... Excuse me, that more than his performance. Also, they seem to think that him basically doing this with his claws over and over is scary. It's not. It's, it's really not. 
If this movie does get a sequel, please do away with that. It's just not scary. It looks silly. There is a fine line between really scary and really silly. I mean, the moment you shine a big light on what people find scary, it looks silly. Also, when you spend too much, you know, when you have them do the same thing too much, you get used to it, and it, it isn't scary anymore, and sometimes it even moves over to being silly. And that does happen in this movie. The pace is okay, I guess. I just really didn't get that much into the movie. It spends way too little time building up the characters that we should be caring about, or the nightmares that are, let's face it, really the main attraction, you know. The DVD also doesn't have, you know, a jump to a death feature like all the other, but maybe it's on other DVDs, I don't know. They do get a couple of things right from the original. Some of these things do still work. They explain way too much. We see Kruger before he's the iconic Kruger, you know, back when he was still alive. This should never happen. Yeah, I think that's basically what I can say about it without going into too much detail and spoiling something. So, the one thing that this DVD does have is a 13-minute featurette, and it's pretty good. It's a bit promotional. You can tell that they're trying to hype you up for watching the movie, but it doesn't spoil anything of the movie. And they go into a lot of technical aspects, explain things real well. It's interesting. You know, if you find yourself wanting to own this movie, I can't imagine why, except for doing a video review of it, then, yeah, this featurette is fine enough. It's definitely worth your 13 minutes. That was my spoiler review of A Nightmare on Elm Street 2010. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.